Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Chattanooga, Tennessee, it's time for Chattanooga Business Radio. Now, here are your Business Radio X hosts. Welcome to another exciting and informative edition of Chattanooga Business Radio. Stone Payton here with you this afternoon. This is going to be a good one. Please join me in welcoming to the broadcast author, speaker, serial entrepreneur, and CEO with the company Lab, Tashia Malakasis. How are you? I am great, Stone. Thank you so much for having me on. And you know what? I just want to give you big, big, big kudos for being able to speak Greek the way that you just did. <laughs> great with that name. Well, I'm practicing because the family is going to Greece about April or May of next year. So I'm getting, I'm getting some good practice. <laughs> okay, wonderful. You just let me know if you need any other tips. I'd still have family there and go every year. <laughs> you got it. Well, listen, I got a ton of questions. I know we probably won't get to them all, but I think maybe a great place to start start would be if you could paint a bit of a picture, articulate for, for me and our listeners, mission, purpose, what are you and your team really out there trying to do for folks? Yeah, so CoLab's um, absolutely our raison d'etre. Um, our reason for being is to support entrepreneurs and founders um, at various stages during that journey. And as you may or may not know, Stone, you, you, know, you can come, come to us with an idea for a business, or you can come to us to help you um, scale that business that you've already been working at for several years. So we're we're working across that spectrum to support those founders in our um, industry strength areas, and also just as as generalists for for business support. But our what we do is we exist to support those founders. I got to know the backstory. How in the world did you find yourself doing this kind of work and serving this this constituency? You know, I um, have been always uh, on on the other side of the table as a founder and working on founding teams in in two different industry sectors, predominantly stone building businesses. So that's been my life's work. Really, fifteen years in the media tech industry, and then fifteen years almost in the, in the CPG industry. And I had my last exit, so it sold the, my last company, and um, took it. I had purposefully planned. I got my son off to school, and I'm an empty nester. And I said, "I'm going to take your gap year." Uh, so I said, "I'm going to take a year off," and I landed in Chattanooga, and was sort of tooling around, wasn't really sure what my next move was going to be or even if I was going to have one for a while and came across the company lab. And I thought, well, what could be more fun than helping people do what I've done my entire career, which is which is build and scale businesses. So I think it was a, it, it's been a match made in heaven. So at this point, and you've been at this a while, what, what are you finding the most re- rewarding? What's the most fun about it for you these days? Well, so as you might imagine, Stan, like, so if you're a founder or an entrepreneur, then you're, you probably are a really good starter. And what I mean by that is like, you've got a vision, you've got an idea, and you're willing to take those incredible risks to say, yes, I'm going to bet whatever that, that bet is on this business. So that being around people like that really is, and that's, I would say that's my tribe. Those that are crazy enough to say, I can change the world with this solution. And I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, put all the, put all my chips on the table, so to speak for that. So I've enjoyed that part. But also I would say that in terms of starting, we have started some new programmatic um, efforts in the organization that have really been exciting. And that's, and that's and that's the kind of thing that um, that I think I do best. Well, and it sounds like you're working with a variety of organizations at different stages, like from start to to scale. Walk us through yes. that work a little bit, if if you would, and and if you're up for it, maybe share a use case or a success story so we can kind of get a feel for it. Yeah, for sure. So the organization soon has been around for about 15 years and really started as kind of an economic development play to revitalize a particular area of Chattanooga, actually on Main Street. And the organization was called Create Here. And really getting to see that those businesses there which were a lot of artists to see themselves as businesses and to help them to you know to shore up the, their their business efforts and their success stories. And then we mor- morphed into we took over that um, that five hundred one c three because that organization was meant to sunset, and then w- walked in 
to more tech-enabled businesses. And the first partnership in, t- in, in terms of answering your question about START was, as your audience may or may not know, Chattanooga has the fastest internet in the country and developed uh-huh. that with the you know, gig speed internet with EVB. And we started working with them. I'm like, what would you do if you had access to this speed internet. So that was really more focused on start. It's just ideation to business creation. and it, But it was centered around an asset that we had here. We've continued that over the years. And I would say that that's probably more generalist as opposed to industry-specific support. Um, we have now really are focused our start efforts in our 10-county area and are working with rural entrepreneurship and again from ideation to business creation. And on the scale side, we've as opposed to being generalist and saying any idea, any business, any sector, um, on the scale piece, we have focused on an industry sector that we really believe is um Chattanooga's at the heart of Chattanooga's competitive advantage. And what we have done is we've, we have put together a program called Sustainable Mobility Accelerator, and that is focused on the future forward movement of people, goods, energy, and data. As a city that's been given the moniker, the Silicon Valley of Freight, and we've got these incredible energy companies and battery tech and Volkswagen making their electric vehicles here, we've got the largest, or the, yeah, the largest test bed for connected autonomous vehicles in the world. I mean, like all of these assets, we're focused on helping those businesses scale and then offering in turn value to our corporate partners there. Now, that was a lot of words and I might have gone too deep. So reel it back in for me if I need to, well, if I need to hope. You didn't go that. too deep for me. And I got to believe uh, that's, it's got to be incredibly rewarding work to to see the anybody with just even an ember and fanning that flame and giving them the encouragement so to make this happen is there curricula do you have like you know uh, margarita mondays how <laughs> what's, what's the programming <laughs> yeah if there's not a margarita involved i'm not i'm not <laughs> kidding um yeah no so we do have um what we would call programs that we run on both the start side and on the scale side as an example of a program on the start side we we offer um a, either a, a two-day boot camp or a 12-week course mm. that's called co-starters and co-starters is an is a program that helps get your business from again from that idea all the way through it's really an intensive business plan writing um, exercise where you go through every facet of the business. Where do you need to focus? What are you leaving out? What's your ideal customer profile? Takes you through all of those pieces to get you to the place where they, I, I've got a roadmap that I know how to build this business. And that is um, an incredible tool that we've had for a number of years. In fact, we developed it at um, at CoLab and then that spun out and now it's a, it's an international offering that um, for entrepreneur support organizations like ours all over the world. So that would be an example on this start side. On the scale side, what we're doing with our sustainable mobility accelerator is we bring those teams in. It's an application process and it's competitive. You have to apply and get accepted. And upon acceptance, there is an investment into your business. And we are, we're walking you through in 12 weeks how to get your business to scale predominantly by pairing those businesses stone with corporate partners here like Volkswagen, uh-huh. EPV, TVA, Navonics, Kenco, Freightwaves, et cetera. So with the industry strength that we have in Chattanooga for freight and logistics and transportation, just in mobility in general, that's the way that we offer that program. Do you find sometimes that the aspirational entrepreneur or the new entrepreneur, um, well, and I guess maybe even the one that's had some success and now is looking to scale, maybe sometimes walks in with some inaccurate preconceived notions about getting a business off the ground. Like I, I, maybe that's a little strong to call them myths, but you know, I know in my world, there are some inaccurate assumptions sometimes about how to help people and make money with this platform. For example, I got to believe there's some around getting a company off the ground and scaling it as well. Oh, a hundred percent. And I would say Stone that by and large, when you look at some of the, you know, some of our most successful business stories in this country, they most often involve a pivot. 
Meaning I walked in with an idea and started down a path for a business, found out that what that offering was, was not the best offering. Mm -hmm. The market didn't respond well to that, but there was another pivot that then led to a success. So there are absolutely um, dozens, if not hundreds or thousands of instances where uh, founders and entrepreneurs say, I'm going to go solve this problem. But then it turns out after spinning some wheels, you find out that, okay, there's actually a better problem that I can solve. And and those are those are interesting moments to watch happen. Well, you're, I guess you're hanging out with other entrepreneurs, other people struggling with some of the similar issues. You may make a real connection. You can, you know, even if you're starting a surfboard company and somebody else is starting a, a cheese company, I mean, you can probably help each other. I, I bet you'd lifelong relationships, friendships, business uh, opportunities. Yeah. hundred percent. I think, you know, what we sort of talk about or what you hear a lot about in this sort of entrepreneurial ecosystem is that, you know, these just sort of synergistic connections that are made between founders that um, they're watching another team or company really grind and work hard and that fuels the other one. Or, you know, here's what I found works better when you're trying to figure out who your ideal, ideal customer profile is, et cetera. Like there's a lot, there are lots of synergies and yes, they're all sort of in the same to use that term again, if it's appropriate, tribe, right? But these are these are people that are grinding to make something happen, um, and 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 betting all of it on on that concept. So yeah, there, that absolutely happens. And again, I I don't know that there's a better word for it than other than just sort of these collisions that happen when you put like minded people in the same room. As you've been describing the work and the people, the middle picture I've been painting for myself is like this this entrepreneurial oasis. And there's probably some some truth to that. And at the same time, I have to believe that the 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 larger business climate of the Chattanooga community must be incredibly supportive. How are you finding the the Chattanooga area, the business climate? Do you find that they are supportive? So I don't think I've ever been in an in an environment that is as supportive Chattanooga. Now I'm not, you know, I don't want to preface it. I mean, I'm not on the campaign trail for, you know, for Chattanooga <laughs> at all. But it, and I, as a newcomer, relatively newcomer to Chattanooga, I feel like I can say this from a perspective of having been in lots of other cities. I have not found a more rich and inclusive and collaborative environment in general than Chattanooga. It's, it's really impressive. And just to give you a really quick anecdote of that, I was invited to go to a program at um, participate in a program at Harvard Business School, um, which is called Young American Leaders Program. And it's really about U.S. competitiveness. And the way they think about that is that, that cities are the heart of our national competitiveness. So we're I'm in a cohort with we're Chattanooga has got to be the smallest um, city that's included in this program. We've got Pittsburgh and San Diego and Miami and um, and, and think of you know that caliber size Boston and it's a case study led program and all of the participants from all of these cities vote on which case study of a city was deemed successful and Chattanooga and the cohort that I was in was the only city that was deemed successful because of the collaboration efforts that exist here that you can plug that in and I've consistently found that to be true so it's not just an anecdote because Tashia likes it it really is there is something special in the water here well there's all that and there's the hot chicken and the moon pie store right <laughs> <laughs> and there is there are those things too yes and that river and the mountains and all the outdoor activities it's a it's a great place to be I, I know the answer to this question is yes, so I probably ought to figure out a way to rephrase it, but I'm just going to throw it out there. What, what I wanted to ask about is, uh, have you had the benefit of one or more mentors along the way as you had to navigate the terrain of building your businesses, exiting from them, and now in this new world where you're trying to to serve these folks? I, the answer has got to be yes, but speak to that a little bit about the mentor uh, relationships maybe you've had a chance to to profit from. 
Yeah, for sure. So I would say, yes, the answer is yes. So, um, that, that mentors play a big part of that. And so I've now, I would say, sort of on my third career is finding people who know the industry that you're in and that are willing. And most people are that have been, it's, my, it's been my experience that most people who have had a, and led and have climbed the ladder to success are very eager and open to giving back. So as an example of this, um, Belshev was the goat cheese company that I acquired and scaled. And when I thought about who I wanted to be in that market in terms of brand personality and presence and who did I look to, what kind of brand in that space I could I see that had done a really great job? And one of the rebranding efforts that I did with Belshev, it was only sort of in the high-end cache cheese shops in the country. And I wanted to try to take something that seemed sort of high-end and maybe inapproachable and make that approachable and fine in an everyday event, not the two times a year that you have wine and cheese with your family or your friends. So I, immediately Ben and Jerry's came to mind. So I I reached out to um, I reached out to Jerry and made a connection and even asked him to be on my board, talked about why, you know, where the synergies I thought were, their premium brand, but that, you know, the, I just loved the way that they'd gone to market and how they grew their business from a, you know, one shop to, you know, to, to international brand. And he couldn't join the board because of the relationship with their acquirer, but would said, you can call me anytime. So my that has been my experience that if you find someone that you really want to emulate and you really want to learn from, go find the person that best emulates that and call them. And by and large, I would say 96%. This is not science. I haven't done the numbers really, but that most of those people will want to be on your side. And Outside of my personal experience with that, we have established our programs to be heavy on the mentor side. So we currently have five teams in our sustainable mobility accelerator with us from all over the world here in Chattanooga. And they have a series of what we call mentor swarms. So we're pairing them with the business leaders in this community who either have subject matter expertise in the mobility space or they are they have just been, you know, business leaders that have general business advice that they can offer. And they're willing to give their time to these teams. And it's the smart team that really leans in and and figures out how to lever that. Wow, that is marvelous. Well, I often ask my guests, you know, how the whole sales and marketing thing works for their practice or their firm. I, I don't, is there even a sales and marketing aspect to your work or are people knocking down your door and you need more space and, and more staff? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, there is a good bit of outreach, right? So I think okay. um, not not every founder, and it is sort of a lonely thing in some ways. I was actually listening to um, someone's journey today about starting a business. Being a founder can be very lonely and you're working really hard. So that, you know, th- but there is a lot of outreach for people who don't know that we're here to support them. So we are letting people know what our offerings are and how they can be with us. And we would, and I would say on the on the scale side, we do active outreach to try to find teams that are working in that space that will be a benefit to either Chattanooga or to our, our corporate partners. So we are out looking for great teams to work with. And we also want to make sure that our messaging is out there enough. So if there is someone um, that's looking to start a business and they don't know what the resources are and they don't know how to get started, that we have services to to um, provide them. Now we do have our phone ringing and we do have plenty of <laughs> offerings, but yeah, we but we also spend time on making sure that our that our audiences know that we're here to support them. Well, speaking of time, do you ever take some? and do something completely outside the scope of your work that we're talking about. My listeners know for me, it's hunt, fish, and travel. That's what that's where my white space, I call it, is. You nerd out about anything other than the work from time to uh, time? Sure. Well, I mean, I mostly nerd out about food, Stone, and then uh, travel. So if I could figure out how, if someone would just pay me to travel and eat, then <laughs> I would be the happiest clam that has ever been. But I haven't figured that one out yet. But those are... Um, if you find me happy, most often I'll be in the kitchen, preferably with a glass of wine in my hand and cooking for those people that I love. So that's what led me to the food industry from from tech. And so that's certainly the other piece. But it, or I could be a nomad, you know, like I, I, I love the travel aspect. 
not doing much hunting and fishing, but I did do a little fishing with my son this past weekend. Oh, good. Well, I have come to believe, I choose to believe that if I do take a little bit of a break and go to the water or go to the woods or we, or we take a, a trip across the pond or that I feel like I, I do recharge and I come back that much better equipped to serve my clients and the people around me. I, so I've come to believe that it's important for us entrepreneurs that are like 24 seven, at least in our head around our business. Uh, that's anyway, that's my perspective on it. I, and I'm in your camp. So I absolutely believe that. And I don't think if you, I mean, to use, uh, you know, a, a, a vehicle or an, an electricity analogy, if you don't have any battery left, you're no good to anyone, right? Yeah. Um, not yourself, not your employees, not your customers. So I don't, Some in some ways we would get in this really strict work culture where we think we've just got to grind all the time, but you, you, it's not sustainable. So you know, find, make sure that your passion is involved in your work. And I actually would say that you, you should make sure that your work is your passion too. And I'm certain it probably is your stone. Oh, amen. It certainly is. And we've circled completely back to the Margarita Monday idea, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Hey, uh, before we wrap, I would love to leave our listeners with a couple of things to to chew on, maybe a couple of uh, actionable, I call them pro tips, maybe something on starting or scaling, but let's leave them. And look, gang, the number one pro tip is reach out to the company lab, learn about their work, have a conversation uh, with Tashia or somebody on her team, but to, to, to hold them over between now and then, let's give them a little something to chew on. Yeah, well, thank you for that, Stone, and I appreciate. Yes, absolutely. Pro tip is 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 reach out for support because um, we we do have offerings and we are here to ha- here to help, and we are a five hundred one c three, so that's not going to cost you anything. That is that is our mission is to support you. the The biggest pro tip that I believe the most firmly in Stone is 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 really its perseverance, um, mm. and and so you, in order to, I, I think it is hard, right? It's, I mean, this is hard work. And I just remember there was this one speech that Steve Jobs had given. He's like, if you don't love it, if you don't love this thing that you're trying to do, then you're going to quit because it's hard. And there, every single, almost every single business success story that I've ever heard came upon some time where they thought, I can't do this anymore, or I'm close to bankruptcy, or how am I going to make payroll, or I don't know that this is the right offering, how do I pivot? That that determination to have persistence and perseverance through those times, it's typically right around the corner when you're in that middle of that space. Now that's not always the case. And I'm not going to tell anybody to persevere when they've, you know, they've lost all their, you know, they, they put their life savings on the line, but oftentimes that perseverance is, is, um, is, is, is a key piece. Yeah. All right. What's the best way for folks to tap into your work, have that conversation, learn more about the company lab website, whatever the right coordinates are. Yeah, the website's probably the best. And um, we've actually just launched a new one. And it's at thecompanylab.org, all spelled out, thecompanylab.org. And we'd love to hear from you. I think there's an input tab on every single page. And, you know, one of my pet peeves now with websites is you can't ever find a phone number to call anybody. We (laughs) have our number, so you can call us. And if you need me, I'm at Tashia at the company, It actually, collab.is. So you can reach out to me directly. Well, Tashia, it has been an absolute delight having you on the broadcast this afternoon. Thank you for your insight, your perspective, your enthusiasm, and thank you for the work that you're doing. The The work that you and your team are doing is so important and has such tremendous impact on, on so many. Keep up the good work and, and just know that we sure appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you saying that, Stone, and we need people like you in our camp. And so I'm I'm glad to have you here and glad to have some time with you. So thanks for having me on, on today. My pleasure. All right. Until next time, this is Stone Payton for our guest today, Tashia Malakasis, and everyone here at the Business Radio X family saying we'll see you again on Chattanooga Business Radio.